Well, the great nice. thing about that, one, is community, and it brings community together. But two, it's also from the health standpoint, you yeah. know, because if, you, if you're a healthier community, that saves on cost, you know, when you talk about going to community health centers or hospital and that sort of thing. So whenever people, we found this also uh, inside of uh, the sheriff's department, when our workforce and our inmates really tend to look at their health and take care of themselves, it's a much better thing when you talk about longevity of life. You right. know, and so that as you get older, and you know, as you get older, body parts start to weaken and aren't as strong. So if you can prepare yourself now, so I think that's a great thing that you've got going on down here. And the fact that you've got all the community involved, and it's all throughout the community, and the prizes don't hurt either, but just getting people, particularly young kids, if you get them involved now, while at this young age, hopefully that's something that sticks with them. So as they become teens and young adults and adults and so on and so forth, it sticks with them, and then they turn that back around to help their kids out, you know. So I think that's a great initiative. Sheriff, you make an excellent point when you talk about the kids because, you know, this whole childhood obesity really is a problem. I mean, exactly. it's something that I have to say back when I was a kid and, and even for many years after that, you know, you didn't have that real type of problem. But I think with the proliferation of fast food restaurants and, and not only that, but you've got parents now that have to, you know, you in a, in a, a two-parent family or even a single-parent family, right. You know, they're working two jobs to try to make ends meet. Right. It's not as easy to come home and make homemade dinners for the right. kids, you know. Right. So right. kids, unfortunately, and oftentimes have to rely on fast food or takeout orders. And it's not always the same as when your mother, my mother may have. That's right. But here's dinner, another you thing know, also. So. You remember when we were kids, my mom would always say, get out the house. Go play with your friends, yeah. go run around. A lot of times now kids are playing with the video games or in the mall and that sort of thing. So I'm not sure that they're running around as much as they used to. And in tough budgetary times, a lot of schools have cut back on physical education. They've cut back on PE. And so I agree with you that from the standpoint of the home-cooked meals and then also getting out to burn off some of that energy, when you have an absence of those two things, that allows for weight to get on, and then that really takes things that can spiral out of control. You know. Yeah. Well, you got to remember too, and, and you know, it's interesting you say that because it's so true. Uh, I those exact words get out of the house. That's what I used to hear. You know. <laughs> and uh, but you know, we didn't have the Xbox That's and right. the, all this other no, stuff that no. kids have today. No. They could, you know, they could stay in solitary confinement, right. I think, forever. And if as yeah. long as they got the gadgets. Yeah they can get by, you know. Yeah. For us, what did we have? We had television with a few shows on That's back right. in those days. Right. So it's it's a, it's a completely different scenario now for kids. So, yeah. yeah, you know, so, you know, you're right. Get the kids out. I mean, I they, you couldn't go down a street years ago where people weren't doing a pickup street hockey That's game right. or a basketball That's game. Right. Or, That's right. You know. Or it, just running around. Yeah. You know, just chasing your friends, just running around. But the thing about the uh, Xbox and all of that also is the proliferation of social media. You know, now there's clearly a lot of good things about social yeah. media, but once again, when you talk about just kind of being in isolation, you know, when yeah. you're just kind of sitting in a room, just doing the social media thing, that also has not just from the health standpoint, but just from the communications, the interaction with your peers, you know, there's something that's also rich and textured about getting out amongst your neighbors and friends and family and communicating face to face. Right. Versus just over the other, they got the Skype, Skype thing. But that may be face to face, but that's not really face to face because you've right. got the screen, you know, in between the two of you. Talk to me about your crime watch initiatives here, down here in Revere. Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a I'm a huge believer in um, uh, uh, obviously public safety. To me, is priority number one. That's right. my top responsibility right. as the as the chief executive officer of the city to keep people safe um, uh, and uh, you know preserve the integrity of our neighborhoods. Um, so Crime Watch, you know, that whole notion of community policing is very, very important to me. And so we're really trying to beef that up as much as we can to reinvigorate the Crime Watches to, in fact, we're opening up a substation across the street here. Um, our police station, as you know, uh, moved from its location in right in the uh, central business district down to Revere Beach Parkway, a little bit isolated, a little harder to get to for a lot of people. Right. I think a lot of people were starting to feel that. So we're opening up a substation here on Pleasant Street, same street where the old police station used to be. Yes. That'll be manned, not 24 hours a day, but as many hours as we can get it manned. Uh, we have a couple, we have one community service officer now that's completely dedicated to community policing, nice. and nice. another one on Grant, 
who's a retired Revere police officer and actually served with the U.S. Marshal Service uh, 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 for several years as well. So, um, you know, uh, we're going, we, you know, we're really doing a lot of outreach to residents and businesses. Um, you know, to talk to them about how to keep their homes and businesses safe right. and uh, how they can kind of collaborate amongst one another to be the eyes and ears of our police department because they can't do it alone. And right. I mean, it was, it was uh, evident just unfortunately recently on Marathon Monday right. how, how appealing to the general public can be so helpful to law enforcement. So, um, yeah. Let me ask you, what do you, there was a, a story in the uh, Globe today, um, talking to Commissioner Davis up in Boston, Police Commissioner Davis, talking about the need to have more cameras out in the, on the street corners and on buildings, basically as a public safety measure. What's your thought about that? I mean, some people see that as a great thing. Some people see that as maybe an invasion of privacy to have all of these cameras out there, basically checking the streets just so that in the uh, unfortunate uh, event of crime, you have some sort of documentation which would help to um, capturing, you know, the perpetrators. What's your thoughts on that? I'm a complete proponent. I mean, I think, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we can't have enough cameras. I mean, truth be told, who doesn't have a smartphone, a camera phone now? Someone wants to take a picture of you. Right. I mean, none of us in the, in the big picture have privacy anymore. Um, you know, uh, the cameras... They're not going to be going into homes right. and putting cameras inside your homes. Right. The, you know, putting them outside, I think, is an extra layer of protection for the public. So a perpetrator that might be up to no good right. might think twice if he sees a camera right. up on a pole right. or sees a camera pointed out from a business. Right. So th I'm a huge proponent of cameras. Um, you know, uh, uh, um, you know th I know this whole notion of infringing on people's rights and all this other stuff. Right. You know, uh, listen, you know, I think that uh, at the risk of maybe infringing on somebody's privacy, if you want to call it that, if they're out on a public street or a public right. sidewalk, um, you know, uh, is not as important as the safety of our residents and safety of people who may traverse our streets. Um, that, to me, uh, uh, um, you know, is a no-brainer. I would put up as many cameras as I could get. And interestingly enough, it was those cameras, when you talk about the uh, marathon bombing, that played such a big part in capturing these two guys as quickly as, as it wasn't quick enough, but as quickly as it happened because of those cameras, because of that surveillance, because they were able to identify these guys and actually track who they were and where they uh, had been and what it was that they'd done. And so I agree with you, you know, that, you know, at, 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 at what cost? You know, do you not have this type of surveillance and things can spin wildly out of control? Or do you have that and hopefully you can kind of stem the tide, you know, of criminality? Let me ask you about your community police officer. Is he or she in a vehicle or are they actually on the beat moving around the community? Both. Okay. Both. They have a community police, you know, they have their own community policing vehicle. Yeah. Uh, in the summer months, they're going to be out on bikes uh, yeah. um, and... Uh, you know, uh, out, you know, patrolling around. And um, uh, the goal ultimately is, and I believe our chief is going to be talking about this with the uh, sector cars, is, you know, ultimately to try to have each sector car maybe stop in their particular sectors, getting out of the vehicles yeah. for an hour or so per shift, and, uh, you know, let the other sector cars kind of cover for them if they needed to, but right. have them walk around their areas and meet the people and talk to the people because oftentimes as you know sheriff there's you know you get in from you get a lot of information from people that you can't see just driving by that's right so uh you know i think that you know by having our offices out there and be being more visible being more vigilant with respect to talking to residents and talking to to uh you know uh, our business owners i think is going to give them more information. It's going to it's going to it's going to uh, build confidence right. um, in our police department, right. so that the police aren't looked at as the enemy. You know, uh, sometimes people they look at police and they automatically get kind of a negative feeling. And really, they're there to make sure people are safe. I mean, the only people who should be worried are people that are up to no good. That's right. You know, That's right. so uh, they're there to help. And and uh, so we're trying to do everything we can. I know the chief is and our command staff and and people, uh, really all of our offices that uh, 
are out there day in and day out, um, are there to try to keep the public safe. So. Listen, Mayor, we're out of time. Uh, definitely we will be back again. Love to have you come back on and talk about uh, the uh, sand sculpture event that's coming up uh, pretty soon uh, on Revere Beach and all the host of other great things to go on. But I wanted to just say thanks for coming on, being my first guest down here in Revere, and it was an honor and a pleasure to talk to you today. Sheriff, it's been my honor and my, and, uh, my pleasure. I want to congratulate you on the great job that you're doing as sheriff, and I want to thank you for everything that the Sheriff's Department provides our city. You do a, a terrific job, and you're a tremendous asset to our community, so I want to thank you for that. Well, thank you so much. All right, folks, we're going to go to a break. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes, so if you got to go and grab that soda pop or that popcorn, do it now, but you're going to want to come get back in your seat real quick for the second half. We'll be right back. Please do stay tuned.